Let's go over some steps on how to install Mumax 3. I have some documentation here in this repository called Mumax 3 How To. And this is the full URL for your reference. And so Mumax 3, of course, is a GPU accelerated simulation program that helps us to visualize and study micromagnetism and even nanomagnetism. So the main Mumax 3 website can be found here. This is the page. It explains what Mumax is about and the fact that it's open source. So that's that's pretty great. And here are some of the things that you can do with it in the physics community and the engineering community, I guess. In some cases, maybe in the art community. <laughs> so, all right. So, if we go to this README section of the repository, it'll bring you to this first hyperlink that says how to install and run Mumax 3. So, it'll bring you to a PDF document that I wrote, and there's also a TXT version of the document. And if we click on this, you'll see the PDF preview, and you can follow the directions from top to bottom. And in order to interact with the hyperlinks here, you have to download the PDF. And this is what you would see. So the first section is just a quick reference to get you up and running after installing Mumax 3. Or maybe you are trying to get more comfortable with using Mumax 3 for the first time after installing it. And now you need some kind of reference here so that you can perhaps get get comfortable with the scripting because everything is run through the script. There's no button that you can press to bring up Mumax 3. That's just, just how it is. Okay, so... If we, if we go over that part, we skip that part, now we can go to this next section, which is just starting to introduce the prerequisites for Mumax 3 installation. And that is the hardware. You gotta have an NVIDIA GPU. And it's gotta have a capability, a compute capability of 3.0. I believe that goes as far as the GT700 series or so. You can double check here on this hyperlink. And then the RTX 20 series on up for sure is well above 3.0, so you should be fine. Anyways, keep the NVIDIA drivers up to date, and now we can proceed. So this is something I wrote here in case you have it installed Python already. You can begin by installing at this hyperlink, and it will bring you to this download Python page. And then after that, you can start to install pip if you don't have pip installed already. So what you would do is go to the command prompt, at least here at Windows, you, you would go to the search bar, the start menu, and type in command prompt. So once you bring up command prompt, you can copy the script here and then paste it over here on the right side and then press enter. And then from there you can install pip. But I have pip installed already, so we will proceed to the next step. Now, what we need to do is at least install mini conda. You can also use anaconda as well, but it takes longer to install. And for data processing, post-processing the data from the simulation results. You can use Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook, and here are the hyperlinks for those. And optionally, you can also use Google, Google Colab or whichever data processing tool that you feel comfortable with. Even Julia works. I, I couldn't list Julia on here, but those are just options. So Miniconda, if you go to the hyperlink, it's downloadable on Windows, Linux, and it says here that it's, that Miniconda works on Mac, but however, CUDA is, is not supported by Mac. Mumax is 
not supported either, so you're just gonna have to stick with either either Linux or Windows. And if we keep going down the list, you'll see this next section is about using Anaconda prompt in admin mode. So this comes with Miniconda already. So what you would do is go to the search bar or the, the start menu and type in Miniconda, and then run as administrator, and then press yes. So this is in the base environment. You can choose to install it there if you wish. However, in my case, I like to keep things a little organized. So you can optionally type in this command, conda create double dash name space and a whatever custom name. And then you press enter and it will create a new folder for you. And in my case, I called it Umax3. It's just a custom name of this environment. And so in the environment, that's where we will install all of these Mumax related things. So in order to start installing stuff in the Mumax custom environment, we have to type in conda activate whatever custom name. In my case, it's Mumax. I called it Mumax 3, so I'm going to type in Mumax 3. And now we are in the Mumax 3 environment, for example. So from here, this is what you would do. Go to the next step after activating the environment. We need to install PyTorch. So you can copy this script and paste it here. Or if that doesn't work, go to this hyperlink. Bring you, it'll bring you to the PyTorch website. And then pick the stable build, Windows, Conda, or PIP. Click on Python, and then CUDA 12.4, which is the latest CUDA support on here. And then it says run this command. What, what you can do is copy this whole command here, and then paste it here on the right. And if you press Enter, then it will prompt you to install PyTorch that's supported by CUDA. And in my case, it's already installed. So that's good. Now we can proceed to the next step. The next step involves installing SciPy. So you can type in conda install SciPy. Enter. And it's already installed, and that's a good thing. If it's not installed, then it will start to install. That's needed. The next thing we need to do is install CUDA from NVIDIA. So even though CUDA is enabled on the GPU that you have, the NVIDIA GPU, we still need to install this. So we can go to the CUDA website here that's hyperlinked, and then click on whichever operating system you have. In my case, it's Windows 86, 11, and then local. And then I can download this into my folder or somewhere in my downloads folder and then proceed from there. And so installing this CUDA toolkit takes a while. So you'll have to wait a couple of minutes for that to finish. And then once that's finished, then, well, hopefully the CUDA installation process will go smoothly and then it will add the variables to the paths the path in the system variables, system environment variables by itself. But just to double check, what you would have to do is go to the start menu again and then type in system environment variables. So there you go. It'll bring up this window that says system properties. And then under the advanced tab, go down here to the section that says environment variables. Click on that. And you should see something that says CUDA on here. 
and don't click on anything in particular just yet. Scroll down to the section that says path and then click on edit. And you should also see CUDA listed here somewhere. So it's listed on here. That's what we want. Okay, so we will come back to this here very soon and we will make sure that Mumax is referenced on here. So that way, every time we call upon Mumax in the terminal, it will actually pop up. It will actually run the Mumax program. So, like I said, it's very much like running a server. Mm. Okay, in the case that CUDA is not listed here by some chance, then what you would have to do is press new and then dig into the folder of where the CUDA program is located. You would have to open the file explorer and then you have to go to the, the local drive and then you would have to go to the program files and then look for NVIDIA GPU Computing Toolkit. And then should, there's a file here that should say CUDA. And then version 12.6. And then go to the bin folder. And now from here, what you need to do is right-click this bin section and then copy the address of the text. So once you click on that, you can close out of this file explorer. And then go to go to the edit environment variable here. Click on new and then copy or, well, paste the directory here and then press enter. And now it's on here and you can press OK. But since I already have it on here or it's been added automatically, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Press OK, press OK and OK. OK, wonderful. From here, you would have to restart the computer and then go to the next page, which is installing Mumax itself. And from here, you have to go to the download page of Mumax. This is the URL to the page. And now we can select the platform as you can see, it supports Linux and Windows. So I'm going to do Windows, and I will select the latest NVIDIA driver that's listed here, so 451.21. And I will download this onto my computer, and I will save it. And I already do have it installed, so I'm just going to do this one more time for demonstration. It's a zip folder. There you go. And now I can close that. And now what we'd have to do is unzip the downloaded file. And you can start to save the file in in a desired location. So let's go to my downloads folder, click here, extract. And now I have to browse and let's say I want to put this here in my program files. And I created a folder called Mumax3. So in your case, you would click on New Folder, Continue, and then you could type in Mumax3, and then press Enter. So I'm going to get rid of this because I already created that. And then once you do create the some Mumax folder, and then you can select the folder there, and then it will save the unzipped or the extracted contents in that folder. Okay, so now that you know where the new Mumax program is saved, you can go back to it and click on it. And now what we need to do is, while we're still in here, you can see it says the file type is called an application. So it's like an exe or executable file. And from here, what you need to do is, since you know where this location is at, simply just copy the address of the folder that the Vmax program is located in. So once you copy this as a text, go ahead and close this file explorer. And now what we need to do is 
bring up the system environment variables. One more time, from the Start menu, and I go to System Properties, Advanced Tab, Environment Variables. And now we can go to System Variables, scroll down, select Path, click on Edit, and now we can add Mumax. So we will right-click on this, paste the location of where the Mumax the Mumax program is, and then select OK. Now we can press OK, OK, and we should be good to go. The next thing we need to do is try to run an example script. We don't need this anaconda prompt here on the right anymore, so let's close that. I will bring up command prompt. And now what I need to do is go to the examples. So now we can go back up to this quick references section here. And I go to the examples. Let's run one example. So there's this thing called standard problem four. What we can do is copy the script here. And we can go to something like Windows Notepad and then paste. Now we can save this with a custom name somewhere in a desired location. So you can create a folder if you'd like, but I'm just going to put it in the downloads folder. I'll, tell, I'll call this standard. Problem four. It might be best to add an underscore so that there are no spaces in between. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to save it. So now it's called standard problem four dot txt. Now I will close this and I will go back to the documentation real quick. And so this is the directory. I will need to make a note here real quick. So this is the name of the file, .txt. And the format says this uh, command directory, the directory to the file. OK, so the file itself is located here in the downloads folder. So I'm just going to copy this address as text right here. And now I will paste it here and I'll press enter. And so now we are in the directory of where the file is located. The next thing we need to do is type in mumax3 i. So we'll do that mumax3 i. And then the custom name is standard underscore problem. Whoops. Problem underscore four dot txt. Hopefully I remembered that correctly. Oh, so the problem is actually capitalized. Let me go back. Problem. And if I press enter, it will say allow private and public access. Go ahead and allow. And now you will see that Mumax has popped up into the browser and it has begun to it, will, it has begun to run the simulation. You can see a compressed preview of the magnetic. The, the, the magnetic uh, directions here, the vectors of the magnetism. It says pause, so I, I believe the, the program is finished running. And this is the script that has, that has everything ran. 
This is their magnetic saturation, the exchange anisotropy, and a number of other parameters. There's a lot of default parameters, which is one of the great things about VMAX. It doesn't it doesn't force you to write every single parameter. It will it will keep some default values for you for convenience. And then if we look at the file explorer, you'll see that there's a folder that's been created. And there's some OVF files here. And there's a table in text format. So if we click on this, we can see that a table has been created. So now what we can do is copy all of this and then go to, well, if you, if you have Excel, you can open Excel, create a blank workbook, click on this first box and then press control V. And so now we have all of the data that's been generated and we can begin to save this somewhere in a desired location. I'm just going to put it back in the downloads folder. I'm going to call this standard problem four. This is an Excel file. So now it's been saved. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to close the, the rest of this. And then I can close this as well. And now if I go to the downloads folder, this is the Excel file the result of the computed problem. And we are done. So now, now that we are done and the GPU is finished, it says disconnected. So we can just close that window, close that tab, and then the rest is, the rest is okay. So now you can just look at the additional resources for your reference. There's some materials on some advanced topics. And then some of these papers I found, they talk about using Mumax for a specific kind of studies on specific mechanisms, <laughs> magnetic materials, yeah. <laughs> Simulating modern magnetic materials. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot for today. You can do whatever it is you want with that Excel file example. You can also look at some of my other examples I did in the Jupyter Notebook. And this is actually available. You can open it with Colab. And here's like a hysteresis plot, for example. And here's some example scripts you can use. And this is all open access. And now we can close the command prompt. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Take care.